when that line is crossed. Right. And you will mar, you will kill, you will destroy, you will desecrate, you will devalue, you will demean, and you will discourage to have your way. Because you don't care anything about crossing that line. Right, sir. That's the reason it's God's children. Mm -hmm. We constantly have to keep ourselves in check. All right. yes, Amen. Up in here. Right. When you start to discover that things are upsetting you simply because it's not your way, something is wrong with your love. Amen. When the Bible says, let us love one another, that means I look out for what's best for you. And I don't have to worry about you taking advantage of me because when you love me, then you look out for what's best for me. And if I'm looking out for what's best for you and you looking out for what's best for me, then we got each other. Maybe that's a healthy love. I got your back. You got my back. My back is covered. Your back is covered. We good to go. The problem comes in. It's when I'm watching my back. <laughs> kind of hard to do. But many of us have mastered it. <laughs> it's a little difficult, but we done practiced enough to where we can watch our own back. And the way I watch my back is to make sure I don't let you behind. Amen. You follow me? Right. Some of us that don't let us get close, don't let nobody get close. Right. You ain't getting in. Hmm. I'll shake your hand and I'll speak to you. Can okay, I give you one of them, one of them hugs? Uh, you know that say I'm hugging you, but I really don't want to hug you. <laughs> you know the kind of hugs. <laughs> you know, and instead of pulling me in, <laughs> right, right. I like to be pulled in. I was the firstborn in my family. All I've ever known is love. Amen. Back where I came from, folk pulled you in. Yeah. Back at the home congregation where I grew up, an older sister would grab you and smother you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of the most joyous times and one of the most frightful times I ever had in my life was in church. But I got smothered by one of them sisters. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in there. I'm in there. But it was love. Folk don't do that no more. <laughs> uh, I ain't gonna let you in here. <laughs> Invade my personal space. Uh -huh. Something has gone wrong. When you can't open up and love and accept people for who they really are. Right. We know that we have some monsters that exist among us. They've been so influenced by the enemy that all they know how to do is hurt. Right. All they've ever known is hurt. And that's all they know how to do is hurt. I understand that. But you can't go around treating everybody as if they are the one that's out to get you. Right. The Lord sat right there at the table with the man who he knew was going to betray him. Sit right there with him. As God, it could have caused him to choke to death at the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. Many of us would have. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's be honest, many of us would have. Yes. We'd have gave yes. Judas that sop, and that sop would have got hung up in his sop. <laughs> and he'd have been gassed up for air. But the Lord, being God, had the power to do that. But he just told him, What are you doing? What are you going to do? Go ahead and do it. Can you know someone is out to get you and still do right by them? You follow what I'm saying? Can you know that they're plotting against you and still tell them, bless you? Oh, come on in the room. Can you know for sure that they have gone behind you 
scandalize you and said some things horribly about you. And then honestly look at them. All right. Embrace them for who they are. When you master that kind of love, then you have the kind of love that John talks about in that text. An unconditional love. A love that's not based on what you do to me. But a love that's based on what the Lord has done for me. And that's the reason why I will never do you wrong. Because he's been too good to me. Ain't nothing in the world you can do against me. That's going to make me want to get back at you. Because I got a father. Who says vengeance is mine. God says I will repay. And if God is going to do the repaying, then all I'm going to do is the loving. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to do good to you. I'm going to love you. And I'm going to let God have the rest. I have better things to do with my stress level. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. I got better things to do with my stress level than waste all that energy directed at you. Just love you like the Lord said, and he'll take care of the rest. Brothers and sisters, don't ever cross that line between love and hate. Don't ever allow somebody to provoke you to cross that line. Because there are some folk that will try. The devil has strategically planted them in certain stations in your life. Yes, sir. And they are there to make you cross the line. Right, sir. If you ain't careful, baby, you'll cross it and you'll double back and cross it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> If you're not careful, if you're not careful, they'll get you. That's the reason why we have to stay focused. We have to stay prayed up and stayed up. So that when the Lord returns, we can see him in peace. Are you here this afternoon? Do you realize that maybe you've been a product of that thin line between love and hate? Maybe you've been guilty of doing it. Maybe you've loved people based on their ability to please you. And when they displease you, you cut them off. Huh. Write them off. Maybe you've been on the other side of that. It's time to change somebody. Mm -hmm. Change is repentance. Repentance is the type of thing that will get you back in favor with God. When David repented, God forgave him. Uh, and, and, and so that, even the Lord said that you must repent or otherwise you're going to perish. Luke 13, 3. So repent of your sins, confess the fact that you've sinned, and our God will be faithful and just to forgive. If you're here and you're not a member of the Lord's church, the only way you can forget, get forgiveness is to be baptized. You have to be saved. You have to be washed in his blood. In order to be washed in the blood, you have to hear that he shed his blood. When did he shed it? He shed it when he went up Calvary's cross. He was nailed to an old rugged cross. Blood ran down his body. A spear was pierced in his side. And out of his side came blood and water. He shed his blood in his death. Do you believe that? All right, when you're well on your way. But belief causes you to change. That's what the Bible calls repentance. So after you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, according to John 8, 24, you got to repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3. Then you must confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is God's Son, and then you can be baptized in the water for the remission of your sins. Baptism is the only way that the Bible describes that a man can be saved. Mark 16, 16, the Bible says, He that believeth and he is baptized shall be saved. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, Peter says, The light figure we have run to, even baptism doth also now save us. The Bible says explicitly, plainly, and repeatedly that baptism saves a man's soul. So you're not saved until after you're baptized. It is, according to Colossians chapter 3, the operation of God that takes place, which cuts away the deadness of the flesh so you can rise up as a new creature in his son. And so that's what you want to happen tonight. You can do that. When we stand up, you walk on down this aisle, we'll take you right behind the curtain and baptize you. You'll leave here right with the Lord tonight. Because you obeyed the gospel. Will you do it tonight? Come on right now. We're together. We're standing as we sing. Yes,